Welcome to the CAP and CLIA Requirements for Clinical Research Laboratories course. My name is Vention with is Susie Tran, and I have about a little over 10 years in a regulated laboratory environment, so, and I have over 20 years of quality management experience in other regulatory environments that, you know, with GLP, GCP, and GMP. So I am not an expert, but I do have an understanding of the pharmaceutical industry and the requirements from the, in the medical community to what some of the expectations are. And in this course today, though, we will be looking at is what the goals for CAP and CLIA are as it relates to patient safety and privacy. Describe the general CAP CLIA requirements, and again, this is going to be high level, but it will give you a feel of the expectations and some of the ideas of what are the differences between the CAP, the CLIA, and the ISO 18189 requirements, and then also give you some information on how to identify inspection and or audits of a laboratory's compliance to CAP CLIA. So let me go ahead and start with a quick chat. And I ask, which of the following requirements are you familiar with? If an A, B, C, D, or E, whatever works for you. Okay, well, that's good, A and B. Understood. There is some overlap between A, B, and C. I can see that, and you know, same thing with A and B. All right, thank you for the feedback. Let's go ahead and get started on the overview of CLIA, CAP, and ISO 15189, and their goals for patient safety and human sample test results liability. So what is CLIA? Well, CLIA refers to the Clinical Laboratory Information Amendments of 1988. The statute is an amendment to the Public Health Services Act in which Congress revised the federal program for certification and oversight of clinical laboratory testing. Two subsequent amendments were made after 1988. However, the law continues to be cited as CLIA 88. So prior to CLIA, though, the federal regulations for laboratory testing was limited to testing performed in independent laboratories and hospitals. The CLIA statute extended regulation to all types of testing sites and based regulations on the complexity of tests and not the type of test, a type of lab where the testing occurs. Thus, laboratories performing similar tests must meet similar standards whether they're located in a hospital, doctor's office, or other site. So that kind of helps maybe put in perspective for you, Deborah. These regula federal regulations come about due to reports of inaccurate results. Basically what happened is that the reason they came about was because there were reports of inaccurate results from pap smears, and therefore there was a need to ensure the accuracy, reliability, and timeliness of test results. And some of the things that were discussed earlier, the CLIA, the CAP, but those were listed in 17025 ISO standards. And all of them bring into some perspective accuracy, reliability, and timeliness of test results, but they all have a little bit of a different focus on kind of control they're expecting. And for those that are not familiar with CLIA regulations, I want to refer to 42 CFR 493. And if you have a pencil or pen nearby, you might want to have that because I will be giving you references to some of the regulations and other documents so that it might be able to help you, you know, as you want to look for more information after this course. So the main thing to do to understand about CLIA, though, is what is meant by a laboratory. And so a laboratory means a facility for the biological, micro, and I'm not going to get into, you know, all the testing, but basically, or other examination of materials derived from the human body, and that's a key thing to remember. It's derived from the human body for the purposes of providing information for the diagnosis, prevention, or treatment of any disease or impairment of or the assessment of the health of human beings. So basically, CLIA is about materials derived from the human body, and they're being used specifically on the treatment, prevention, diagnosis on an individual person. 
So when you're looking at a clinical, and I'm going to go into this a little further. So when you're talking about a clinical study, a protocol level, that, that has to be taken in consideration. What is the data about? 